Hi, everybody. Welcome to Halo Fest. Thank you for coming to the toy panel today. Uh, my name is Corinne Robinson. I work for 343 Industries, and I am deeply honored to get to introduce the panelists for you today. Uh, to my right, we have Mr. Todd McFarlane, who is the CEO and founder of McFarlane Toys. Next to Todd, we have Andrew Sparks, the Vice President of Boys Brand Management for Mega Brands. Next to him is Jason Ray, the Director of Licensing and Development for NKOK. And he has the best name tag. And on the end, we have Tyler Jeffers, the Product Development Manager for 343 Industries. All right, today we're gonna start at the beginning. We're gonna have these guys tell you how toys are actually made, what the process is, and I'm gonna kick it off with Todd. Oh, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna do the video? Yeah, we've got a short video before we get going. Let, let's just sort of show it to you visually, so when I talk to you about some of what you're about to see, it'll make a little bit more sense. So I think it's about a minute long, so if we can uh, cue it up here. Yep. Are we ready? <laughs> Things that I wanted to do was to just make the coolest figures that were out there. Without taking up too much time, let me see if I can sort of give you the quick reader's digest of it that you saw right here. There's only a couple ways you could really make a toy. You start with a chunk of clay or you start with a computer. I mean, when I first started in the business, most of what we did was clay. Now a lot of it is done in the computer. But even more, we've, we've had the uh, honor of being able to get literally the wire frames from Bungie that they use in the game because I, I convinced them why should we be trying to do a pretty good facsimile of what already exists just give us your wireframe and let us go from there we have to cut in the, all the articulation and luckily they said yes to us so what, what ends up happening if we get the wireframes from from Microsoft from Bungie over the last couple of years we use it we still have to add detail because it's not all there because uh, if, I don't know if you guys know, but in those wireframes, they have to come in there and they paint a lot of, uh, on the, in the video game, they paint the detail. So we have to add the, the detail on top of it. But once we've actually got all that detail in the computer, I don't know if you guys saw in there, but it, we then hit a button and we've got a machine and it makes a wax out, output of this thing, literally out of wax. If you put it in the sun, it would melt. So obviously something that's made out of wax, as we all know, it's too soft. It's not going to survive very long. So you guys saw in the video, too, we, we have to do a molding and a casting. So once we get that output of that little wax head, then we have to spend about two hours, three hours adding even more detail to it because it's too soft. Then we put it in the, in the mold. We pour that. You saw the guy with the big bucket with the goo? It then makes this sort of rubbery mold. And then we put in a hard plastic so we have that gray one. We've got some of it in the... Uh, the, the glass boots that are in the store over there, you're gonna see the different versions of it. Once we have the hard version, we can then go in there and etch even more detail. We have to get, obviously, through all this, the approval of Microsoft along the way, make sure that they approve everything and the people developing the game get it. And then once we have it, we paint it, send it over to China, we do it 
about two up. They put it in their machines. They shrink it down into, a, into a, another computer. It then takes that information and literally carves into steel. So you've got steel molds. Think about it like a jello mold where your mom used to put it, remember, and she'd pour it out and it looked like a dinosaur. So you, you, then, you then get these steel molds. They put these little pellets in. They close the two molds. They heat, they heat it up. They blow air into it and it goes, and it goes into the shape of it. It comes out. It looks like a model kit if you guys have made a model. You clip all the pieces, you assemble all these thousands of pieces, you paint them all, you put them in the plastic, you get all the packaging, you get all, all the uh, paperwork, you put the sticker on it, you put them in boxes, you ship them over to Hong Kong, put it on a boat, it comes over, lands in, Sa in uh, Oakland, get on a truck, comes into Sacramento, they offload it, they put it on truck. Eventually, it gets on a truck, they carry it halfway around the country, they put it in the DCs, which is distribution centers, of all the stores, and then eventually they bring it to the stores, the stock boy opens it up, puts it on a peg, you guys go in there and go, when's the next series coming out, Todd? <laughs> so that's, that's one figure, that's one figure. So, Anyways, I, uh, I, I'm done. These guys, I'm sure, have a, vari a, a sort of a variety on that. And I think I need them. to offer a prize to anyone that can repeat that. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, no, but I do have a trivia question for you. To win a McFarlane Warthog, um, what was the original name of McFarlane Toys? They put out toys under another name. Go ahead. Todd Toys, Todd toys is correct. Good job. Come up here. Todd Toys! Come, come see okay. Michelle. She'll uh, get to your prize. And I'll give you a little bit of trivia. You know why we're not called Todd Toys anymore? Because I got a cease and desist from uh, Mattel Toys. They were going to sue me because they have that line of Barbie toys. And Barbie had a friend called Stacy, and Stacy had a nephew called Todd, and there's actually a toy they put out. There's this little goofy guy, and his, and his name was Todd. And they said, his name's Todd, and he's a toy, and you're infringing on our rights. So I changed it to McFarlane anyway. So anyway, true story. <laughs> so. All right. I think he explained a lot. But blocks are a little bit different, so we're going to let Andrew take a crack at it. Oh, my, it was my turn? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, blocks are a little bit different. We work in, uh, I, I guess, very similar fashion to Todd in terms of how we interact with the guys at 343 and specifically the gentleman at the end of the table here who is uh, extremely important in the whole process of design and, and approval and uh, uh, actually has a lot of great ideas uh, from time to time. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we obviously will take a lot of the similar type of 3Ds uh, or concept art and then we do a whole kind of interpretation into the block world. So we have a, a group of very kind of skilled designers back in Montreal who will sort of take artwork, take the 3Ds, and then almost reverse engineer that uh, into block form. And you can sort of see up on the screen now some different sort of evaluations of how we produced uh, the Falcon. And there was a number of different prototypes that were made, and we'll use a mix of sort of existing parts from our parts bank. Uh, but then also there's always new parts that are involved. Uh, you know, the creative forces uh, at 343 come out with some wonderful vehicles. There's always some great little differentiations. So we will do some sp uh, specific sort of specialty molds so that we get the, uh, the correct uh, aesthetic uh, on the actual vehicles themselves. And I've, I've been up to Mega Blocks, and they've got all the pieces up on boards all lined up. It's super cool, it, right? It's something that you should just sell one piece one of piece everything. Of that. Yeah, there's an, cool. active, there's an active parts bank, I guess, of about 4,000, 4,500 pieces right now. So we sort of decorate the walls with all of that to remind the designers that we don't have to keep uh, constantly cutting new tools, but uh, that it's fun to work within the system, and the uh, well, fans seem to appreciate that. Yeah, there's another little uh, sort of image on the screen there right now which sort of shows you uh, the evolution of, of how we do sort of our style of figurines. So uh, obviously we're still an interpretation as opposed to sort of the real thing that, uh, that Todd and, and his team put together. So we'll start with a blank and then you'll see the, uh, the sort of way that that's all sculpted. We do all of the sculpting uh, electronically, so we've sort of moved out of clay. Um, it's sort of a, like a simulator, so it's like the, the actual artists start with a, a piece of clay, but it's virtual, it's in 3D format, uh, and then they'll sculpt away. You tried it when you came up, right? Yep. Awesome, thank you, Andrew. You're welcome. All right, Jason. Now, how do you make these things go? You know what, that's been the biggest challenge. Um, I guess it's taken a virtual world um, item and vehicle and trying to turn it into a real world scenario. Um, it's been challenging, but it's been a lot of fun. It's probably, um, I, I like the toys because they keep your interest, you know, and similar to the development process that Todd and Andrew were talking about, of course, we start out with a design and a concept and get a lot of feedback from the Halo team. and 
and um, you know, we kind of decide, okay, how can we turn this into uh, a real world scenario where, yeah, we have to add gears and wheels and motors and everything uh, for the warthog and the, and the, um, the mongoose, but when it comes to like uh, some of the flying vehicles, the banshee, the hornet, um, and the new Falcon, it's figuring out how to get those to actually fly and, and go from, hey, this is a really cool idea and it flies great in the virtual world, but how do we get it to not crash every time you pick it up? You know, so I mean, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it and um, in that aspect of it. And then, of course, you know, another thing that these guys talked about are obviously approvals. We want to make sure that we're being as true and authentic to the product as we possibly can, you know, for the fans out there that are looking at the items going, no, you're missing something. No, it, it needs a little bit extra. And this is supposed to have one uh, character, not two. And so, you know, we're really trying to stay true to the actual game and still make it function as a remote control vehicle at the same time. So, And if I can just add one thing, you've heard, you've heard the word engineering, all three of us. The reason, I mean, we sort of throw it away, but the reason that it's important that you guys sort of understand what that means is we, we all use sort of different materials and we have different regulations for safety and for government. I mean, we, we, we have to... We have to go through a lot of sort of litigious sort of rules and regulations. So although at the beginning we tried to make everything 100% authentic, just to make the product functional and safe and be able to ship into this country, we have to at times make adjustments on it and all the materials don't quite hold it. So I, I'm sure that we could all look at all of our product and go, we wish we could do a little bit better job here and here. But a lot of the times it's just, our hands are tied and we have to just do what we can to be able to have a saleable product. So. They won't allow real energy swords. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> we tried. All right, so Tyler, uh, do you have an army of people approving all these toys or? Absolutely. <laughs> um, we have a great team of people on our product dev staff that work with all of these gentlemen as well as everything else that has the Halo brand on it, from t-shirts to comic books to novels to posters to calendars. There is somebody in our group that is looking at these things day in and day out and working with all these partners to make sure, obviously, that the product is worthy of the Halo brand and also to make sure that all the details and all the nuances and all the interesting things that if, as fans we all like and enjoy are represented properly in all of the products. How many partners do we have right now? 35, I believe, and we shipped over 500 SKUs last year. Wow. 500 different products on shelves, people. Get busy. <laughs> Get more shelf space. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and um, we're going to ask a trivia question to win a Halo 3 art book this time. Um, who can name the two artists, they're two different artists, that did the cover art for Cryptum and Glasslands, the new Karen Travis novel? Right there. Shoot. And? Got to know both. Anybody know both here, artists? Oh, okay, sorry. I know All right. Split the book. Do you know both? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, that's All right. A good one. You can come up and get your book. You see that? He had one answer. She had one, and this kid glued it together <laughs> for the prize. That was pretty good. Good job. That's a smart young man right there. You're going places, kid. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to let them tell you about what they have coming out this fall and next spring. Mm. All right. Oh, that was Tyler again. Do you want to talk about oh, that's cool. what, yeah, how you, you know, do notes? I, we can totally jump in on this. So this is a sample sheet of you know, one of our partners, Square Enix, which have some of their tremendous product and display cases um, throughout the event. And one of our team members going through and basically calling out some of the instances where they had it almost perfect, but not quite. So you know, a lot of the detail, and especially when you go into something that's like a high-end collectible like Square Enix, um, they're able to facilitate a lot of that high-end detail where other partners, you know, across the gamut of the different things like Andrew, and, um, Jason, and Todd talked about. There's things that you would love to be able to put in every product, but unfortunately, these guys can't make something that costs $100 and still get it into retail because they just can't afford to have all of you buy $100 items. So things like that, Square Enix, and the items that all of our group members and consumer products review constantly, we also have to talk to our partners and go, you know, I would love to have a gold play advisor on every Master Chief figure or 
um, you know, spinning rims on the warthog, but eventually the partner comes back and goes, we would too, but we can't do it for X reasons. So it's definitely a lot of uh, collaboration between our group and our partners. And at our, can I say too, at our end, those, uh, if you go back to that page again, those are super valuable for us because, I mean, we all do product with uh, other people and you get too many generic, I don't know about you guys, but you get a lot of generic notes from people. Right. I, I, I don't mind this. I don't mind having somebody that we do toys with that's super attentive, even to the point of being anal. But when they've got a comment, as you can see, it's A, they show you where A is, and then they give you a note exactly what they're talking about in A. So you don't, there's, it, there, it's not very ambiguous uh, when they give it back. So, I mean, we're able to literally take that sheet, make the corrections, and resubmit it, which is a lot easier than when we do a lot of the uh, movie and toy ones that we do and they'll give you notes like, you know, it, it seems like he should look a little more melancholy <laughs> or he maybe he should be a little angrier. And you go, well, you want that mean with the teeth, with the eyes, with the body? What does it mean? Well, just angrier. You know, and, and, you, and you don't know what to do with it. So these ones, we can turn those around very quickly and keep our schedules going. Yeah, and to Todd's point, you know, I want to give a shout out to Michelle Ballantyne who does our approvals. She's, she's been wonderful. And, you know, really it from a toy manufacturer, the quicker we can get things turned around and the more answers that we can get, the quicker we can get it to retail for you guys. So, um, you know, we don't want to rush anything. We want it to be correct, but the partnership that we have with Microsoft and Halo has been phenomenal in order to expedite that process. So, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, Where I, are we at? I think, I think in general, in all three of us <laughs> deal with uh, various licensors and uh, some are good to deal with, uh, 343 are great to deal with, um, and it all comes down to the fact, I think, that there's a lot of sort of brand slash toy fans within 343, and I know I can sort of speak for the three of us as being real toy fans too, so it's, it's, it's a lot more fun to create something that you're passionate about, um, and like I say, with the team of 343, it's, they're awesome to deal with. Yeah, it makes it a, a very easy experience to go to work every day and go, darn, I have to deal with toys again. <laughs> Hard job. A hard job. Somebody's got to do it. Awesome. You guys have cool jobs. Um, let's do one more trivia question. Um, this one's going to be about mega blocks. Tim, you can't answer. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, You're not answering either, Ella. <laughs> what was the first mega block set to feature a red Spartan? Nope, not the warthog. The scorpion, good job. Wow, you got something real special. Come on up. You can actually come up on stage for this one. Something special. You can present it yeah, if you want. We'll give so, what, so what we did for Halo Fest was we actually took uh, one of our figures and put him on a little uh, block build here. It's got Mega Bloks Halo Fest on it, and he's cast in solid bronze. Oh, nice. I don't want to see that on eBay. Awesome, now we'll let them walk through some of their new products. No, you're gonna see everybody's hand go up in the next question. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. All right, Todd, you're up, Halo Reach Series 4. Do you wanna talk about new series? I wanna see this. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, again, uh, in its simplest form, we're, we're just doing uh, almost in chronological order what it is that Microsoft's gonna lay out with their game. So we jumped on board with Halo 3 and then they came out with the ODST. We did a little bit there. They came out with the uh, Halo Wars. We did some of that. They came out with Reach. We did, we did some of those figures. I mean, obviously, you know, next year will be the sort of the big launch of Halo 4. We'll continue to do that as, as well as the guys here. So the, 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 the limitation that we have is we really, we try to do the core figures and, and try to get some of the popular colors and some of the, uh, the popular helmets and weapons and things like that. But I, I actually did the math on the number of characters times the colors times the permutation of if you mix, I don't know if you guys remember your math, but a permutation is if you have 20 items, it, the math goes one times two times three times four times. All, I mean, it becomes a big number. And I think the number we came up with was like 3.4 million different permutations that are out there, which basically means Either A, we will be making toys for a long time because there's no <laughs> shortage of it, but, but we also will, will never 
not have ideas that will be coming. So I keep telling that to uh, the store guys that are buying our product that I go, we can keep this Halo brand going not only 365 days a year, but we can keep this thing going for decades. I mean, literally, even if they, from my perspective, even if they stop making games tomorrow, I think that there's a well of close to 10 years that I could still get going before we actually started hitting a little bit of the peak there. So for us, we're just trying to keep up with it. And as you can see with, with uh, some of the Halo uh, Reach 4 series there, one of the things that we're, that we're getting around to are some of the, I, I think, sort of the more vibrant sort of paint jobs and the, and the costume and armor designs on there. Some of the ones that we've had out there before, although I know they may be your favorite, they, they don't look quite as sexy on the shelf. And when you get the guys now, look at the grunt down there with his cool suit. It looks like, look at him. He looks like he's a surfer bum from California. He's got the cool colors on him. It's that that you, you get four or five colors in a package and you do some pretty nice packaging. For some reason, those actually move a little bit better, right? I mean, than, and, than having three or four colors. When you can have seven or eight or nine colors. So if you guys sort of take a look at, I think, Halo Series 4, you're going to see a really big jump in, in the color palette that we've done in the past. And then obviously, we'll, we'll continue to go into our anniversary product and then eventually go into the Halo 4. So here's some of the, the Halo 10th anniversary. Um, again, some of this stuff is just starting to hit the shelves. We just got a phone call from Target who said that our figures that just came out were the number one selling figures in the entire aisle, beating wow. Transformers, G.I. Joe, Spider-Man, Batman, Iron Man. So we appreciate. We appreciate your guys' support. So, I, 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 and I know these guys had the same thing. I was always having the fight that they were not given the video game toys the same sort of value that they were given to some of the, the TV and the movie ones. And I said, just give us a little bit of space. Because they wanted to give us none. I don't know if you ran into that. I go, look, at, I, I don't want 10 feet like Batman, but to give me zero does not make any sense, given that this game makes more money than Batman in, in about 24 hours when it launches. And I knew if they just gave us one, one little stripe that it would work, and they would put stuff out there. And at the beginning, Walmart put us in about a third of their stores, and within two weeks, it was the number four selling product in their entire chain, regardless, in total dollars. So I'm in only a third of the stores, and it was a number four product in totality of dollars at, at one third of a store. And they finally have begun to open their eyes, mm -hmm. even in your aisle, of that Halo and video game stuff can actually sell. So I don't know what else we've got here before I shut my mouth. Uh, again, yeah, look, I mean, look at, look at what we've got here. If you take a look at the brute, and he's got, he's, look, he's got the big hammer here. We've got some of the other characters. Just look at the color of that compared to some of our other prior lines. And, and, and to me, they just, they look, they look super good. And they look, they look mom friendly, right? So the moms now, I've, I, I, the, the, the big upgrade I've seen is the moms have given up not letting their 12 year olds and 10 year olds play this game. They still won't let them play Call of Duty. They still won't let them play uh, um, Grand Theft Auto because it's too real. But every 12-year-old kid has figured out how to convince his mom that it's only alien blood, and moms have finally given up the ghost. And so Halo keeps growing bigger and bigger. So this stuff's going get, to get underneath the tree because mom will go, ah, it's just good, clean fun now. So uh, what else we have? I think that's it for you. That's it. Okay. All right. And then uh, what year was McFarland Toys founded? Dolph. Bueller. <laughs> 1944? How old do you think Todd is? <laughs> <laughs> that was a few weeks before we killed Hitler. 98? No. 98? 92? No. We're getting warm. What? 2003? No. Yeah, we have a winner. Go what see Michelle for your prize pack. 1994. 1994. That's a heck of a price plaque. All right, Jason, do you want to tell us about some of your product goals and then we'll go into your new product? Yeah, um, from an MKOK standpoint, you know, what we try and really do, like we were talking about earlier, is really try and make our products innovative with how can we take um, an item from the virtual world and make it into a real world thing. But more than that, what will keep your, what will keep your interest at retail? Um, I mean, kids nowadays, you know, they, 
they, we call it the now generation. You know, they want to be wowed now, and, you know, they don't want to take a lot of time anymore with things, and so we want to keep somebody's attention. So, you know, we look for the key gifts, and, the you know, the, the true fan um, loves Halo product across the board, which is great for all of us. Uh, but we try and figure out how we can invent new technology and get the more brand awareness out there, not just from a gaming perspective, but from a, a global Halo perspective. Um, some of the new tech designs that we're working on, uh, you know, for our flying vehicles, we're looking at different controllers, we're looking at uh, adaptations to your iPhone, to your iPad, um, and or your some, Windows phone. Your Windows phone. Uh, some voice recognition, uh, shared remotes, uh, some different controllers and more of a wand type thing. Uh, I don't want to give away too much, but you'll see, th see some things in 2012 that'll kind of, you know, um, take it to the next level for RC. Uh, the Ghost, we looked at the uh, latest vehicle that we wanted to turn into a remote control. We thought this would be a really great um, vehicle to do that with. It doesn't hover, it does have wheels. Uh, there's some engineering feats that you just can't do when it comes to an actual vehicle yeah. <laughs> at a price point. Um, but this is really cool. You know, we've, we've taken the Ghost uh, assault vehicle and, and taken its, its quick maneuverability and we try to translate that into a remote control. So, I mean, it spins really, really fast. It, it, it drives really fast. We feel like it's a really fun gameplay. Um, and it does come with an elite minor figure, so. Uh, the Falcon, uh, like I was speaking about earlier, this is one of those vehicles where we're trying to actually make it fly and make it into a, a real fun toy. Uh, it took us a few months to get this engineering down just with the balancing and really still try and give it that true um, you know, Falcon feel for what it really does in the game and how that translates to a toy. So it took us a while, but we got it, and hopefully you guys will have a lot of fun with it. And when does that one come out? This fall? Uh, that actually, we, we're shipping a little bit late, fourth quarter, and but mostly it'll be for spring. Nice. So soon, few months. Yeah. Beautiful. And Andrew. Well, that's the boring part. Hey, the text. You want to look at the pictures? We'll skip we that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So new for us in because uh, we've had a lot of people collecting our uh, our figurines, uh, our little uh, sort of mini versions. So um, new for uh, us in spring uh, is going to be a whole. Um, sort of concept of armory uh, build and customize. So in all of the, um, all of the sets that we ship, uh, you'll ha get alternate armor pieces to interchange. So it's no longer just sort of single figures uh, in each set, but you'll have sort of the ability to build multiple looks and feels to, to figures. Um, and it is all backwards compatible with anything you previously have in your sets as well. So you'll see that across the whole line. Uh, then we start to look at uh, sort of the actual armory packs that'll be shipping. So again, here you're starting to see new permutations of new armors, new characters, new colors, and a lot of new weapons coming into the system. Um, we had a lot of fans uh, calling us for, um, I guess based on the success of the drop pods we've been doing for a number of years now, uh, for an, uh, a flood uh, version of the drop pod. So that's new for spring, uh, along with a new shade turret as well, which is something we'd not done before. Um, and then two new really kind of cool vehicles that we've been wanting to get into the, the, the system for a while is the UNSC Spade, and he's going to come with a Skirmisher, which is a brand new figure for us. And then also a sort of Revenant that's coming uh, with a Drop Shield, which uh, I wanted for a while, and uh, finally we figured out we could get it in. And that'll be the first, re first Revenant that anyone's made, so... You'll have to pick That's it up. Cool. Get it when you can. And then the, the new update to the Battlescape. So we had a lot of collectors that, I don't know if anybody has had a chance or an opportunity to have a look over in the, uh, the sort of forging area we've put together, but uh, we always build these kind of cool dioramas. Uh, and again, it was uh, a lot of fans calling us and saying, you know, how could we do that? How do you make these dioramas? Can you give us something uh, that would give us the ability to build these large kind of scapes? Uh, so we, we brought out one this fall, which has been tremendously uh, successful, and we've got new refreshes done in new colors for that. So uh, you'll see not only the desert one we've got out there right now, this kind of more sort of jungly green feel if you want, and uh, look for an Arctic one coming uh, somewhere in the not-too-distant future as well. Very nice. 
Tell us about this contest you have uh, running. The Toymation contest. Well, for I did, some of you may have seen both on our website or on on Waypoint, um, and even on on sort of uh, sort of through your Xbox console or, or Waypoint uh, com that uh, we do these sort of like stop motion videos using the sort of toys, and this is a kind of cool, fun expression of the world. Um, then we had again a lot of people, a lot of fans are they're, they're really sort of you know into the whole franchise and, and sort of the whole building aspect of it, making their own uh, and submitting them to us, posting them on YouTube, that type of thing. So we sort of said, well, you know, why don't we actually make a really kind of cool competition. Uh, so we're, it just launched, uh, if you go on to uh, halotoymation.megablocks.com, uh, you can go on there, you can upload a video. I think we've got about a thousand entries so far since when we launched, which was back in August, of, uh, August 5th. Um, so it's been a tremendous response. So you can get on there, you can look at the, the different videos that people have done, you can upload your own. Uh, we open up voting, I think, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, and some really cool prizes, and uh, there's a pretty cool panel of judges as well, uh, some uh, Halo experts that will be judging the, the works of art, as I like to say. So yeah, the, the, there you go. This, you see some of the judges there. Uh, somehow I snuck on the panel. Uh, <laughs> Bernie Burns is on there. I think everybody's familiar with Bernie. And also uh, 343 Zone BS Angel is one of our, uh, our lead judges. Um, there's also a gentleman, we don't see his picture there, Pascal Blay, who's actually an award-winning uh, director, an uh, Oscar winner uh, out of Montreal, along with some other stop-motion animation experts. So uh, on, the blog, uh, on the actual site itself, there's a blog uh, that has some tips and tricks on how to do it. So lots of great prizes, cameras, computers, toys, all that sort of stuff so I encourage anybody to uh, awesome. either enter if you're that way inclined or uh, at least check it out. I think we have a promo video to show for oh, you. Cool. Has anyone seen my keys? be intimidated because mine didn't look anything like that either but uh, <laughs> that's the promo one yeah we need lots of entries for this so have fun with your mega blocks make a video good times um where is mega blocks headquartered he's already said it once montreal canada good perfect 
apologize. Sure. Okay. All right. I guess you're coming on stage. You've actually got an RFID tag in it, so you can't actually sell it. You have to keep it forever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's terrific. All right, Tyler, why don't you tell us about, we only have three partners on stage. We have 35 right. partners. You have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so um, obviously we couldn't get everybody on the stage, uh, but 2012, 2011 has been incredibly well, and there's lots of stuff on the shelves for all you guys to enjoy. In 2012, we're just going to keep continue that momentum with these excellent partners as well as everybody else that we have um, that weren't able to attend today. Some of the things that we have immediately at Forward is uh, Square Enix is coming out with some figures to help celebrate the 10th anniversary of Halo. They're doing a Master Chief figure, uh, both of these, and a new Silver Edition that's going to be a New York Comic Con exclusive or the display case over by um, the Big Team Battle section. So definitely go and check those out if you haven't already. Those will be out in November. Uh, the other thing that we have that I can kind of roughly talk about that's a really good, I'm terribly excited about it, but we have a new partner starting on product uh, in 2012 called 3A Toys. They're going to be doing uh, some interesting Halo stuff for us late 2012, uh, so definitely keep stay tuned for that. We're going to be doing formal releases, obviously start showing some more things, but we just started uh, actually working with them a couple months ago. So. And that's all? That's it. Okay. All right, we're going to do some more questions with our panelists, get to know them a little bit better, maybe hear more about their cool jobs, and I will just fire them off. Sure. All right. Let's see. Jason, what makes a good toy? Uh, like I alluded to earlier, I think what makes a good toy in, in our world is something that just keeps your interest, you know, for longer than a couple minutes, you know. So I mean, we really try and build something that uh, you're going to want to go back to, you know, multiple times. And uh, some that's fun. All right. Todd, what's the hardest part of owning your own company? Wow. The hardest part? Um, in all honesty, dealing with the employees. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's true. It's, well, guys, let me, let me just sort of, it, again, he's got, a bi he's got a bigger problem than me. But... It, it, <laughs> When you're, I started my career as a comic book artist, me in a room, that was it. I never got into any kind of disagreement with anybody when I sat in that room by myself. But for anybody that's got a girlfriend or dated somebody or has been married, it, it starts when you, it starts at two and it only, it only multiplies at three. So you try to keep it down to a dull roar, but there are plenty of days where I'll, I'll, I'll have two adults having a conversation that I go, we shouldn't be having this conversation. So let's just, and, 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 and let me, not to make it negative, but it's always interesting because I do some other things with video games and other things in Hollywood that you, you, you have the two people you're having this conversation with that work for you and you go, what's your goal? And they go, to do the best stuff we can for your company. Good answer. What's your goal? To do the best we can for your company. So, so why are we having this conversation, right? <laughs> the enemy is outside the building. The enemy is never inside the building. So, what? I don't know. What does that mean? <laughs> I meant at my company. I go, the competition, the competition is outside, outside, of, my, uh, outside of my door. The, own, the people I employ are not, you, you guys shouldn't be sort of clanging heads. So that's, sadly, we, we spend a lot of time sort of dealing with. Well, since employees are difficult, how many people on the panel have worked for Todd? <laughs> and they were my two problem child, and I sent them to Microsoft. <laughs> All right, Andrew, what is your favorite Halo vehicle? Tank beats everything. <laughs> All right, Todd, if you could add one thing to the Halo universe, what would it be? If, I, what would you, if you could add one thing to the Halo universe, what would it be? Guilty spark! Wow. <laughs> one uh, if I... If I could add one thing, I, it would be all the vehicles and all the spaceships, everything, you know. Right now we do, fig, do figure-centric product, mm -hmm. and, and we're toying with the idea of figuring out how to make the world, get the world to these people, and, and not awesome. necessarily get the figures to them, but get the world to them. Because so, there is some cool, big-ass stuff, and if we were to make it to scale, in, in, in at least to my figures... <laughs> You guys would have to back up your station wagons and put it in the back there and kick somebody out of the spare bedroom to get it in there. 
So we're, we're going to try and see if we can't figure out some of the scale. All right. Jason, who is your favorite superhero? Superhero of all time? Um, probably Captain America, just because he was the underdog, you know? And I think, uh, I think everybody has a little Captain America in them. <laughs> what? Uh, Andrew and I were Captain Canuck, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so I was a little bit different comic book when we were growing up. <laughs> All right, Andrew, did you play more with construction sets as a kid or now that you work for a toy company? Uh, actually, I, I think it's about even. I don't know, are there any builders out there, like guys sort of my age, older, that do a lot of building? I, I, sort of, I think I followed a trajectory that, that a lot of builders do, which is you play um, a lot with construction toys as a kid and then sort of in your mid to late teens, they kind of go away. You don't actually get rid of them, but you box them up and put them in the basement. And then you get into the sort of late 20s and you sort of start pulling them back out. And um, that's sort of, now I get to do it as research in my job, but it's, it's I just love, sort of always have loved building. And uh, we have a lot of fans that um, sort of write us letters and say, hey, I got back into building because I haven't done it in years. Uh, love Halo, and now there's something really cool that, that I can build with. So um, it's about, I'm, luckily for me, it's it's, about even, and like I say, it's, it's work-related. That's what I tell my wife. All right, Tyler, have you ever had to say no to a partner on a submission? <laughs> I think the people on the panel already know the answer. <laughs> there has been moments where we had to say no. Uh, in a lot of cases, the majority of the partners, all the partners, give us concepts for new ideas, you know, new things they're thinking about. Obviously, they know their product and their world of retail and action figures and toys and RC and construction a lot better than we do. So we, we get a variety of concepts that come in and some of them are amazing and some of them we go, you know, we just can't do that right now. So let's put that aside and then we'll, we'll move forward on something else. You but have some great comments. You could perhaps share with the, the, the group the, the comment that we got on one of the female figures we're doing. <laughs> so uh, what Andrew's talking about is there's an upcoming minifigure of Cortana. It's not this big. And uh, she looks amazing. And you guys will obviously be thrilled to get her in uh, everything. So the original concept comes over, and we usually require all the partners submit 360 turnarounds of all the products. And so the front looks good, side looks good, and then her um, rear end is a little bulbous, so we say. <laughs> Uh, and so we, we were on a call, and I'm talking to Andrew and the product head manager for Mega, Anna, and I, I'm trying to politely say what the problem was, and Anna, Anna tries to go down to the design team and kind of try to politely tell them as well. So uh, the word ghetto booty was used a couple times. <laughs> Kurt, Cortano in a ghetto. <laughs> her, her center of gravity was sort of off, but we fixed it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, how many, <laughs> Andrew, how many different Mega Block sets have you made so far? Do you know off the top of your head? Uh, we are getting close to 100. And uh, the 100th set will be quite special and we'll have some sort of contest giveaway link to it as well. But we're getting close to 100 now. Wow, that's a lot. Um, Tyler, have you ever dressed as a Spartan for a party? Yes, I have. Wow, I just uh, wanted to get that out publicly. Apparently, I'm one of the few people in the studio that survived the augmentation process and can fit into the Spartan costume. And how tall do you have to be to spit, fit in a Spartan costume? What is the YouTube URL on that one? <laughs> Let's see that one. All right, lightning round. These are one word to two word answers, guys, and I'm going to let each of you answer each question. We'll just go right down the row. Um, describe your job in one word. Uh, cool as hell. That's cool three hell. words. <laughs> but I'll take it. Andrew. No, I slurred. Awesome. Jason. Exciting. And Tyler. Awesomer. Oh. All right. What is the best Halo game so far? We'll start with Tyler. Um, I'm going to go with Reach. I like Reach a lot. Jason. Definitely Reach. Andrew. They keep getting better, so the next one. Ooh. That's cheating. Oh. He is cheating. That's right. And Todd. I'll, I'll make it unanimous. I'll go with Reach, too. All right. Yep. Um, who was your childhood hero? Todd. What was the question? Who was your childhood hero? Who was my childhood hero? I, this may sound corny, my dad. Nice. Totally fair. Jason. 
Wait a minute, he's next. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Andrew. Give more time to think. Uh, I'm going to go with Doctor Who, uh, Tom Baker. Wow. wow. Tyler? Spider Man. All right, guys, what is the last game you played on Xbox Live? Slayer. Todd? Uh, Halo. Okay. Yeah, I got Reach. a 12 year old. He, 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 he's always dragging me in there playing Halo, so, oh yeah. Jason? Definitely Halo Reach. Yeah. All right, you guys all are Halo Reach, huh? Yeah, I played an oddball match before I came over. <laughs> All right, um, if someone wants to get into the toy business, what is one piece of advice you would give them? Uh, let's start with Jason. Do your research. <laughs> Andrew? Um, yeah, you, you, uh, you have to be passionate about toys. And um, you, you, it's a lot of fun. We come to events like this. You get to kind of see the fruits of the labor. It's not an easy industry to, uh, to be in. I mean, Todd and, and Jason can, can attest to that. It's a highly competitive industry, but uh, yeah, do your research. Make sure it's something you love and something you want to do, uh, but there are opportunities at the at companies out there. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun when you can go to work every day and, and uh, um, you know, really get into sort of toys. But it, I, the only thing I would do is I would warn people is it's not all kind of glamorous. It's like a lot of people have sort of hobbies that they try to turn into a business uh, that fails because you, you get kind of too emotional uh, you know about it, so you have to understand that there's business, work, um, and and then sort of this this passion or love. But if you got a passion for toys and you got a thick skin, um, it's a great place to be. And and the only thing I'd add to that is that uh, th be a little bit stubborn because there's a wide variety of jobs within the toy making business, and and they're not all sort of the director of the movie. So so to put out toys, we need all of us and myself. We need. We need people who can sculpt, who can make weapons, who can do females, who can do monsters, who can pour molds, who can paint, who can design packages, who can do accounting, who can deal with logistics. I mean, there's some unsexy jobs that are still just as necessary to get the product out there. So you, even if you don't have a artistic skill, but you still like the business, and, and you have a smart mind, there's still plenty of those jobs that are, that are in there. I can say the same for the video game business too. I mean, there's, there's 20 different categories, and if you can figure out which one of those you excel at, and it doesn't have to be art, you can still make a living and, and actually be in that business for a long time. I mean, awesome. at, the, at the end of the day, I think we all love our jobs, we all love what we do, you know, otherwise we wouldn't excel at this business. You know, but like, like Todd said, there are a lot of jobs out there that you have to figure out the balance, you know, and the things that keep us going with the monotonous details of the job is our passion for what we do, so. Well, we have lots of toys to give away, so let's get started on that part. Yeah. All right, um, if you know the answer, just raise your hand for these. Um, what's the name of the first company that made Halo action figures, and in what year? Oof. Two part. The year's tough. Joyride in 2001? Nope, they didn't have toys the first year. Behind him. No. <laughs> now you're just guessing. Uh, in the hat. Close, no. Behind him in the beard. No. Yes, good job. Yeah, winner, 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 winner. Awesome. We kind of narrowed that one down, but it was Joyride in 2005. All right, what year did the first Halo RC vehicle come out from NKOK? In the red. No. Uh, in the black shirt. I can't hear you. No. In the hat. <laughs> yes, 2009, first RC vehicle. Meet Michelle. Oh, she's out there. Did you buy it? All right. Um, we're going to guess what Jason's favorite Halo vehicle is. No. 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 Yes. Didn't he say tank beats all? No, that was Andrew. No, this is. I'll let you. No. No, no one said it yet. Keep Stripes. Going. Keep going. No. <laughs> No. There's only so many vehicles, people. Nope. Yes, Mongoose in front. Ooh, yeah. 
All right, who can name two different people or two different partners that make uh, apparel for Halo? Does anyone know the companies that actually make them? No? That guy's even One? wearing a shirt. Quick, check, check, check your tag. tag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not on, I don't think it's on the tag. Let's see. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Echo ha Mark Echo has made apparel. Come on up and get a prize. Got a one now. Our other partner is Changes. They sell at Hot Topic, stuff like that. Anyway. Um what is the diameter of a Halo ring? Ooh. Yep, come on up. What was it? Ten thousand kilometers. Halo ring diameter. Uh, what are the names of the two Spartans in Headhunters? Yep, come on up. Uh, let's see, who can name three pieces of usable equipment from Halo 3? Turquoise or blue shirt. Yep, come on up. Who can name three more that he didn't name? Stripes. <laughs> come on up. Nice. All right, and name four vehicles that are in all the Halo games. Whoa. Who haven't I called on? Uh, in the middle, in the gray jacket. Yeah, you. Good job. Uh, what year was Master Chief born in? Ooh, ooh. In the center. I can move that. No, no. Uh, with the mustache. No. In the brown shirt. Yes. Did you just put that on your phone? Come on up. <laughs> it's okay if you did. Uh, who's the mother of the Spartan program? Oh. If you don't raise your hand right now, you don't love Halo. Um, oh, the girl in the guild costume. Yes. Come on up. All right. She didn't say doctor. What is the magazine capacity for the MA-37 assault rifle? Uh, with the, right there in the black shirt, this, third row, kid, you. He's got everything. everything. Oh, d who, are, who didn't win out of you two? Okay. No. 32 is correct. All right, that does it for that portion. Um, we're going to do some big prizes now. We're actually going to do um, some... Big sets, giveaways, lots of stuff all together. So, um, everyone look under your chair. If you have an, a red flag under your chair, please stand up. Somebody get a picture of that. That was brilliant. <laughs> Does anyone have a red flag under their red chair? Red flag, red flag. No, a little red tag. Huh? Anybody, anybody, look at the chairs next the to you. Tags from the yeah. chair is it, is it on, underneath their chair? Yeah, it's under the chair. It's, a, it's a underneath the bottom of your chair. There's one. Stand up if you have your red flag under your chair. There should be five of you. Five of you. And then we respect all the chairs back in an orderly fashion. <laughs> all right. If she's the only one, I'm just going to give it to her. Any other red flags? This is, this is a lawsuit waiting to happen. I know. <laughs> oh, wait. You guys got one? All right. All right. You three come up with the red flags. We're going to play a little Price is Right. So stand Price right up here. Right. One dollar. <laughs> one oh one. Oh, are you saying one dollar? I'm saying one oh one. Okay, <laughs> right. so you guys are going to stay right here. We are going to ask you a question. Uh, we're going to go get the elephant from Mega Blocks. Do we still have an elephant over there? Yeah. So. All right. Elephant is one of the brand new figures. How many pieces, Andrew? Yeah, that's 1,200, right. I learned today. 1,200 pieces <laughs> for the a elephant. Hernia, a hernia waiting to happen. All right. Do you guys know how to play? No, I will teach you. All right, we're gonna ask you one question where the answer is a number. Each of you are gonna give me an answer back. The person that gets the closest without going over wins. So if I said how many eggs are in a dozen and you answered five, six, seven, and 10, she would win because she's the closest without going over the real number of 12. Got it? All right, you guys, the audience can help them out. So, how many mongooses have Mega Bloks sold? To date, 
How many mongooses? <laughs> no one knows the answer really, so you're going to just guess how many mongooses they've sold. We'll start with you. 250,000. 250, All right. 500,000. 400,000. One dollar, come on, do it. 15,000. All right, the real answer is 1.4 million. Wow. So 500,000 wins. We sold, we sold a lot of those. Good job, guys. That's my favorite vehicle. I can send you a fleet in every color. All right, now did anyone have a blue flag under your seat? I know you already all looked. So blue, players, come on up. Yeah, I know. I don't find a red one, but I still look for blue. It might be one Okay. Did they already cross that? Uh-oh. Now, now there's a guy over there, like, looking at every chair down the row. Thanks, Todd. I'm getting just a big all right, same game. The audience is going to help you out more this time, though, because everyone was a little off on the last one. All right. How many total Halo action figures have been sold from 2005 all the way through till today? This is, this is counting Joyride and McFarlane, so it is a big number. I'll give you that. How many toys, action figures have been sold? 1.7 billion. Billion. Billion, okay. No, bigger than the deficit. 25 million. 25 million, all right. One dollar. 17 million. 17 million, I'm sorry, you're all over. Oh. One dollar, so, I told wah, wah, wah. you. All right, let's try one more round. It's lower than 25 million, or 17 million. How many do you guys think? Nine million. <laughs> one dollar. Nine million, okay. Eight million. Eleven, 11 and a half. It's eight million. We have a winner. But if it was eight oh one, he would have won because he won over. I know. You're lucky it was so right close. on. All right. Um, how many of you have been over to build at the forging with Mega? All right. Everybody stand up if you've been over there. Now, how many of you have three sets of Mega Blocks at home? No, Sit down if you have less than three. <laughs> Sit down if you have less than five. Sit down if you have less than ten. Sit down if you do not own a Halo t-shirt. Sit down if you don't own a McFarlane action figure. All right, there's still five of you. Um, let's see, how about... Sit down if you, did, if you did not buy a Grunt plushie yet. <laughs> oh, that's good. We're down to two. Uh, let's see. What else can we ask? Oh, oh. If, do either of you own an RC vehicle from NKOK? Okay. Both Ooh. of you, big fans. You probably already have all this stuff anyway. Should they have it? Okay, you don't win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, both of you come up on stage, get some prizes. Uh, brown shirt and blue shirt. That's it. But they already have everything. Why do they need more? I know. Maybe they'll share. All right. Good job. Way to support us. Way to support us. Perfect. All right. What year was NKOK founded? Red shirt. 1898. A little later than... 1998. No. All right. Remote control rocks. 2002. Not even close. Uh, go ahead. No, earlier. Bottom of a box. 1973, earlier. Later. No, earlier. 1955. Wow, how did you know? All right, where are you doing that's nice. All right, guys, we all, we're actually over right now, but I wanted to get a few questions in. Does anyone have questions? Come line up at the mic. We'll try to get through at least oh, like five or six. the mic. Hold the mic. Wait. We got a few questions. Test, test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, there's also going to be feedback forms. Um, we want to get your guys' feedback so we know what to do next year or in future years for conventions and Halo Fest. So make sure you fill out a little form. Tell them how much you liked having these guys so we can fly them in again. 
All right, um, go shoot. Yeah, so uh, this is for Todd. First of all, absolutely make the larger scale vehicles, Scorpion, you know, anything like that would be sweet for those figures. It would be, it would be awesome even if you only sold 10. And the question is, and uh, this could actually be for anybody on the panel because I, I think it could be multiple products. You could have like a block thing. But what about more custom controllers or something for the 360 itself, like another nice art controller for Halo, you know, for or any of the new Halo games? Um, yeah, th there's possibilities in that. The, the thing that's sort of interesting is that once you go into the controllers and you go into the Xbox, that's not these people here. Uh -huh. you, go, you go into another division of uh, Microsoft and, and uh, you know, their, their breadth of what they want to do isn't quite as wide as the people who are sort of tasked with actually coming up with a lot of cool stuff. So th th those... It, it's pushing stuff uphill a little bit. I know we've talked to them in the past, and they come out with some ideas, but they're they're not quite as open to doing 20 or 30 different cool things. So we keep talking to them from time to time. So we'll we'll all hold our breath for it. Cool. We we actually also just to answer your question, we actually also worked with a different division of Microsoft, and Dennis Tom is um, is the gentleman we worked with over there, and, and tried to sync up or link up possibly the Xbox controller with our RC vehicle. So you go from the console to the game. Um, we're still in discussions about that, so, but good question. Awesome, here, come over here to get a prize for, answer, for asking a question. Next. All right, uh, have you guys ever pressured game developers into making sure that their games are really marketable and uh, easy to make into toys? Like, they want to make some bland, generic shooter, and they're like, no, we want easily identifiable, fi identifiable figures that we can make into toys. You guys ever done that? Uh, we haven't yet with 343 because mm. uh, what's come out so far has been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just to generically touch the rim of Halo 4, we've, we've been able to see some of it. I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, our, our, we're excited because all you can hope for from a toy end is that you get to see new and refreshed stuff that's not going to then be an exact duplicate of what you did last time. Right. And I don't know about you guys, well, but what they've shown uh, me, I go, wow. And that's all we, they can say. That's okay. all we can say. <laughs> I, well, I, as, as, a, right. as a licensee, I'm excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a fan and a player, I was blown away. <laughs> awesome. Right. Next question. Uh, this is for Andrew. Uh, sure. With uh, Mega Blocks, I mean, most of, the, most of your products are kind of aimed at the fans and collectors and someone very familiar with Halo. But are you surprised by the success of the Mega Blocks building sets and the broader demographic it hits? I know a bunch of seven, eight year olds that have never seen the game and right. are just snapping those things up left and right. Well, it, it sort of goes back, I think, to just sort of the previous point and what we talked about earlier in terms of, like, content, you know, and what's cool. I mean, we, we sell tons of Warthog sets in, um, you know, in countries that there's not a sort of large penetration or deep penetration of Xbox consoles. So there's a lot of kids or fans that don't even know, you know, what the game is, believe it or not. But a Warthog is just a really cool vehicle. Uh, you know, Banshees are just really cool vehicles. Um, and I think, you know, we, when you talk about construction toys, vehicles have always been sort of the cornerstone of, of, of construction. And Halo has some of the coolest vehicles ever. So I think it appeals to a real wild demographic. We have uh, our, our sort of blocks brigade. It's, it's almost a 50-50 split between sort of kids and then sort of adult collectors, myself and perhaps yourself, yep. um, that are really just love, uh, love the franchise and, and, and the stuff's just, just damn cool. Awesome. And, Thank you for the question. And, and there was a question earlier about, I, I, maybe it was Corinne that brought it up, of what makes a, a good toy. I mean, one of the things, in a simple point of view for you, the consumers, if you do sort of a cool quality product and you price it right, I mean, you, you'll sell it, right? Because sometimes there's a disconnect. Sometimes you got a cool product, but they want to they charge you too much. But the other way, I mean, again, if you, if you put out a, and he's done it with the little packs there, where he's, you know, for a couple bucks, Right? You only expect $2 worth of value when you're spending $2, so you can, you can buy gobs of that kind of stuff. So you don't have to assume that everything you put out at a different price point has to have the same value on it. So as long as you're fair-minded with that price, you can, you can do a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's all about delivering value. We have a great Halo experience at $2.49, and we have a phenomenal one at $100. Right. But it's all part of the canon. It's all part of the world. It all works together. Um, and, and, it just know, has to be $100 of value in that $100 box. So. That, right. That's it. It's just delivering the value. That's all right, guys. I'm really sorry. We're going to take two more questions so everyone else can sit down. Um, we got to get ready for the next panel. But you two can do the last two questions real quick. All right. Um, 
I don't really buy a lot of your products, but I've seen a lot of them in the store and I like them. Uh, the biggest thing I, I made this focus on when, when I'm buying a, like a kind of action figure based on Halo is a massive collectible, not something kind of small. Uh, do you, are you going to guys make anything bigger, like a couple feet tall? I know it's, it's going to be kind of yeah, pricey, well, uh, pricey on your end, but I'm willing to pay the money to have it because I like those very few collectibles that people don't have to say, I bought this and I'm proud of it. Yeah, no, no. Uh, and so the question is, again, you know, we've got our scale. And again, I talked about playing, playing with scale. Now, I agree with you. I, we've got a couple ideas that we're going to be pitching them that will go bigger, that will have to get spendy. But again, they'll just be the three or four sort of coolest, most popular characters that have been around for 10 years. I mean, again, you can make a three foot tall Batman, maybe Robin, maybe the Joker, but then you can't really do anybody after that. You, if you're going to go sort of big and charge a lot of money for a figure, it better be the top. It better, yeah, I mean, you better be the top four or five guys that are out there. So we're talking about that right now. And uh, one more thing. Yeah. Uh, if you really want to make a toy that's going to really sell it correct, um, do the haunted helmet. Believe me, I'm pretty sure they all want it. Uh, and, 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 and also, just to make it all even awesome, try to make one with blue flames to make it up for Bungie, a leaving <laughs> Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want an armor lock figure? No. <laughs> we, want, but we want those flames. We want all right, guys, one more question, figures. then we're going to get these guys to the autograph area, and you guys can all get in line if you'd like autographs. All right, this question's for all you guys. Uh, when can we expect some Forerunner toys or buildings or anything out of Forerunners? If you want something from us from Forerunner, you can head right over and vote for the Valhalla structure that's uh, in the, uh, the upcoming toys. You can go yeah. over there and vote. But, they uh, have a, three prototypes over there, and whichever one gets the most votes, they're actually going to make. So make sure okay. you guys go vote, You too. can stuff the box. I voted box. already. <laughs> I put my little tie on. All right, thank you all for coming. Please fill out the panel forms, and they'll be over in the autograph area in just a minute. <laughs>